In this video, I'm going to show you all the gear I carried on the PCT. Okay, so here's everything I carried on the trail. I'll, uh, I'll start over here, obviously that's easier, and we'll work, work our way over there. The backpack I used was the Z-Pax Arc Blast. I had a couple of extras put on, mainly just like the shoulder pockets. It did have hip belt pockets, and I also had this V-style top for putting the Bear Can on and the Sierras. Uh, the shoulder pockets were really, really handy, I would get them again. The hip belt pockets, I found that they rode too high. Uh, so when I tried to access things whilst I was walking along, it was too high up for me and I couldn't get in there. Uh, I ended up throwing those away and just getting a fanny pack in the end. But the actual pack itself held up really well. Um, the material's all still really good. You've got this cut here where I, I left it on like a big log and it fell over, so it's my fault. But the rest of it, really, really good. I was really happy with this backpack. It was comfortable, uh, it carried, carried the load really well. And I would definitely, definitely take that again. Inside the pack, I would then put this DCF pack liner. Uh, the whole idea was is that the actual bag and all the contents can go inside of this for when you travel for on the airline uh, to keep everything safe. And then obviously then you can use it as a pack liner to keep everything dry. Uh, I probably wouldn't bother doing this again. I would just like foam, um, cling wrap it before I leave and I would just use a trash bag. Uh, but it worked really, really well. Nothing got wet on my entire trip. Sleep system. For my pad, I used six pieces of the Thermarest Z-Lite. Um, obviously, it doesn't offer a lot of comfort, uh, but I actually found this was really comfortable. I used one of these for the first 1900 miles before I finally changed it out and got a replacement, which is this one. Um, when I went for the Sierras, it was really, really cold. I should have changed this out and got something warmer, which then leads me on to this one here, which is the Neo Air X Firm by Firmarest. Uh, I got this after the Sierras because of just how cold I got. Honestly, I should have got this before going into the Sierra. So nice in the desert for them sort of chilly nights. By the time I was there in like late October, November. Probably should have definitely got this, like I say, before the Sierras. But for the most part, this was absolutely fine. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. DCF ground sheet. Again, this is made by Z-Pax. Uh, it's sized to the size of my tent. It shows no signs of wear. It's actually held up really, really well. So that'll be coming again. Tent I used was a Z-Pax duplex. You'll notice it's in a different bag. The bag it came in got completely destroyed. Um, so I had to buy this replacement, but that's absolutely fine. The tent itself is in great condition. A lot of people get worried about if the duplex is too big for the PCT. I never had a problem putting this up. I could fit it in every single tent site I went to. And yeah, I'd definitely take that again. So for steaks, uh, I had this little steak sack by z -Packs. I started off originally with these like Y-shape uh, steaks that they do. I think I had six of these and I had, I think it was like six of these shepherd hook ones as well. I bent a lot of these and these are the only two that remained out of these. I think I snapped two and I bent another two. But that was by the time I got into like the Sierra and the deserts. So they, they actually held up quite well until then. I replaced them on trail with the MSR Groundhogs. So the exact same style steak. And then this one was just a random one I found um, just along the trail. Yeah, I, li I like these little hooks. Uh, I think they held up really, really well. I, I would maybe get one or two of the bigger ones just for, for the main part on the duplex, but that worked absolutely fine. For my quilt, I used the Z-Pax 20 degree uh, quilt. The only problem was, is I got this slightly too short. It only comes up to my neck, and that's like then if I like stretch out my legs fully, sort of at the bottom of my neck, I probably should have got it the next size up being longer. Also, being a side sleeper, I would turn over, and um, then I get like a cold draft coming up. So maybe I should have got this in the next size up. Again, sometimes it was quite cold as well. Other people I spoke to, they found that this was quite a cold quilt. I would probably look into like getting a catabatic next time, but it, it, done, it done the job. I also paired that with a just a real thin um, sleeping bag liner. So it's like ridiculously thin. It's, it's just some wrap one. I wouldn't bother taking this again because it really didn't do anything. 
I don't think it really <laughs> made anything any warmer. Um, it was nice probably one or two nights when it was quite warm that I could still have something covering me and put the sleeping bag to one side, but uh, I wouldn't bother with that again. For a pillow, I would just use this, you know, the bag that my sleeping bag goes in. I started off with a Sea to Summit Eros ultralight pillow that you, you can inflate and uh, it, it stopped working after like day two. I kept on waking up and it'd be half deflated and just got worse and worse so I got rid of that straight away. And I just, I would just put my clothes into this bag and uh, that was actually really nice. I, I, I would just use this again in the future. For my food storage, I used the z um bear bagging kit, which has obviously like the food bag, and then this little bag, which is full of, um, they call it Z-Line, it's just like a, just, just a cord, and you put like rocks in there and you can throw it over to then obviously um, to, to do a bear hang. I used it in Washington, and then honestly like after the, maybe like the end of the second week, I would just tie it to a tree because it was just so time consuming and actually finding like a decent tree was quite hard. I would probably not bother with this again. I would just get an op sack, one of the motor proof sacks, and I would just sleep with my food. But again, that's, that's up to you. For my cook system, I actually cold soaked for the first about 2000 miles just using pot. And then I actually just used the Talenti jars when the other one got a bit icky. Um, I switched up towards the end when it started getting colder and got this stove system. So I just got it in REI. Um, there was really no like thinking about it. It was just, oh, what have they got? What, what looks lightest? So the Snow Peak mug obviously hasn't got many miles on it. I think this has only got 400 miles, about 450 miles on, on these bits. You can fit a fuel canister upside down in it. The only up downside to this is it doesn't also fit that and the fuel can it sort of like all sticks out but it's not the end of the world so the the stove i got was the msr deluxe really really liked it it's got the its own ignition there so in case if your lighter breaks uh, it's so much more quieter than the pocket rocket 2 i don't know whether or not it was more fuel efficient but um i got along with it really well and then for my spoon, I just used one of them Sea to Summit long handle spoons. Um, yeah, absolutely love this thing. It's so light and that will definitely be coming with me again. For water filtration, I used um, smart water bottles at the start. I had, I think it was like three one litre ones I'd keep in my pack. Now I'd keep a five to 700 mil bottle in my uh, shoulder strap so I had water up front. Uh, towards the end, like uh, in NorCal, and then obviously like for the Sierras and the desert, actually I switched these up and just had the 1.5 litre bottles. I had two of them uh, further back and like a 700 mil forward. Really, really liked them. I would use the 1.5 litre smart water bottles again. For filtration, obviously we've got the soya squeeze. Everyone knows what these are. I started off with the micro squeeze. <laughs> it was terrible. Not the mini, the, the next one down from this. Um, and yeah, comparing it to people with the full size squeeze, I actually got rid of it in Portland. So only after like 500 miles and picked up the proper squeeze. And yeah, I take this again every single time. For my trowel, obviously the Juice of Spades, it's ridiculously light. It held up really, really well. Um, I only had to use like the bottom half of it in the, you know, if it's like really, really hard ground a couple of times. And um, yeah, it's got tons of life left in it. Miscellaneous bits, I carried like a Sharpie, a sewing repair kit, a tick remover, which I never had to use, a couple of spare gauzes, and then just like some plasters. Um, I also had a couple of spare batteries in here for my headlamp, but obviously I haven't got any with me now. But that, that was about it for spare bits. Headlamp, I used the black diamond one. I can't remember what this is. Is it like spot 300 or something like that? This was really good. It held up well. I, I, I loved it for night hiking. It was nice and bright. But the only problem is, is obviously it, it needs batteries and that was quite annoying because you'd have to carry spare ones and you'd always have to like have this big packet of batteries with you. 
Um, so I, I would completely go away with, from that, and that would bring me to this, is what I wanted, um, but I was too tight to get on the trail, was the Nightcore NU25. Like, the big upside to this is you can recharge it uh, from your power bank, and then it means no spare batteries. Like, if you're doing a lot of night hiking and you don't mind carrying the batteries, this was great. But I, I would just take this next time. So, for power, I had this, um, this RAV Power dual port plug. Uh, it's Qualcomm 3.0 quick charge, so everything charged up nice and fast. The only problem was is that I could only get the UK version before going, so I then had to have a UK to US adapter, and obviously that all added weight. Um, it worked really, really well, but next time I'm going to be trying this, which is just a... It's actually, it's got three on it, but it's just another charger. It says it's quick charge. I'm a bit skeptical because of how light it is. But yeah, get a US plug. Don't take a U don't take a UK and then get an adapter because it's just loads more messing around. So I said at the start, I carried a fanny pack because the hip belt pockets on my backpack were completely useless. So this is what I would carry in my fanny pack. I had the Z packs, uh, like passport, zip pouch. That kept all my money in it, and obviously like my passport and my cards. I, I liked having it up front because, um, you know, if you're like jumping into a, in, if you're jumping into a ride, you could put your pack in the back, but keep your fanny pack on, and that way you had all your essentials like on you, if anything were to happen. Um, so yeah, so money in there, passport, this little Victorinox um, like knife. <laughs> this is all you ever need. Some people had these huge knives on them. Uh, honestly, there is absolutely no need for it. This this done everything I needed. Some moleskin loads because it always comes in a big packet. Chapstick, um, earphones, just random ones. Obviously, like sunglasses, hand sanitizer. And then I carried this. It was a Rav Power 10,000 milliamp Qualcomm 3.0 quick charge power bank. That was all I ever needed. I never ran out of charge with this, except for one time when I was coming into town and I let my hiking buddy charge up his stuff on it as well. But that was all I ever needed. If I was doing more video, I would definitely get a bigger one. But for the PCT, that was absolutely fine. Uh, just like a general, just using your phone and just taking the odd pictures on your camera. But yeah, if you're going to be doing a lot of video, get a bigger one. Trekking poles, I used these Black Diamond, I think they're Alpine Ergo cork ones. Um, they're two parts carbon fibre, the bottom two bits and then the top bit is aluminium or for our American friends, aluminum. And then the top is this cork material which has got a, I think it's a 15 degree angle forward. So I know a couple of people that broke these poles. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> but they did, they broke them. The only problem I had was the tip actually came off and I lost it. Luckily I was going into town at the time and there was an outfitters there and they, they put this new one on for me. Um, but yeah, I actually lost the tip of the trekking pole. It, it, it means I could still use it to set up my shelter, but I just couldn't use it to walk with. Wear-wise, they're starting to get quite worn down at the top of the grips. Um, I mean really they should be replaced and just being used for like short hikes. But I could probably get another through hike out of them. The main body is in good condition. There's a little bit of abrasion, but that does absolutely nothing to like the strength of it, it's just the paint. Really, really liked these, super comfortable, would definitely take again. Clothing I wore, um, I wore Darn Tufts, I haven't got any on me now because they're all worn out, but I used Darn Tuff socks, and then I started off with these Nike running shorts, they didn't have any pockets, and <laughs> for the final 450 miles, because we, we went into LA, that's where I picked up these. These are the Patagonia shorts. Now for the final 450 miles I had these and I absolutely loved them because they've got these pockets on the side of this stretchy material. So I could then put my phone in there and there's another one just behind it. So you could put like your earphones. And along the back you've got like a full zip one where like an iPhone 6 would fit in there. Anything bigger probably won't. Then you've got the same pockets on the other side. I would just start off with these, or just shorts that have a pocket. Um, absolutely loved these. But yeah, just just running shorts with the like the inner the inner lining, so you don't need underwear. 
shirt. I had a long sleeve shirt, um, which I actually brought in the UK and it was like designed for UK weather. It wasn't very breathable and I was always really hot in it. It was nice to be able to roll the sleeves down, like say if there was like a bit too much sun or if the bugs were out. But next time I'll just be wearing this. Uh, this is just a short sleeve shirt, which has got like a breathable um, back panel in it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't... I don't know, I wouldn't be using the long sleeve purely because this, this is so much more breathable. You can just use bug spray to keep the bugs off. Watch, I just carried this simple Casio. It's like the most cheapest one out there. Uh, it has an alarm, it tells the time. It's all you need. The rest of this clothing, I didn't start off with all of this. Some of it got added along the way. So for instance, like this Columbia fleece, I picked that up in South Lake Tahoe before we went into the Sierra. Really glad I got it because it was freezing cold in the Sierras, but I probably wouldn't be using this model again. Um, I might, like, I'd use it for day hikes, but I, I wouldn't take it on a through hike. It was just because I needed a jumper, and that was the one that was there. This is a Patagonia. It's got, it's a long sleeve, like three quarter zip, just like, no, sorry, one quarter zip, so just a short zip at the front. And again, it was just an extra layer that I picked up to go into the Sierra with. I'll probably use it again on day hikes and like short things, but in the future I'll, I'll re replace both of those with with like a warmer fleece hoodie. Again, they were just, I needed something on the trail and they done the job. So this is the Patagonia just short sleeve t-shirt. This is what I used for like my t-shirt to sleep in and like for town and stuff. Really, really love it. Super lightweight, doesn't smell somehow, like even after days of wearing it. Gloves, my gloves actually disintegrated. Um, <laughs> I had the Z-Pax Possum Down gloves and they'd done the job, they worked well, but from hiking in them, they got holes in them really, really quick. I won't be getting those again. In the future, if it's just like mildly cold, I'll be using these. These are just like Nike running ones, just to keep the chill off. And then anything where it's like cold, cold, I'll literally just use any generic like fleecy glove. You can then pair them with like a rainproof glove over the top, uh, so so they'll always stay dry. I also carried a buff, carried that the whole way, absolutely loved it. So obviously it keeps the chill off in like the Sierra, I'd pull this like right up over my head and <laughs> it'd be super, super warm, I'd sleep in it. I could use it to get condensation off my tent if ever I had any. The hat I used, this is just a, uh, just a merino wool beanie that honestly, I can't even remember where I got it. The only reason I'm not switching it out is because it's so silly. Like, I've already got this hat and I just don't want to go and spend 30, 40 pounds on getting one that's two ounces lighter. I'll use this again. It's warm, it works. Why change it? Leggings, are these Nike dry fit running ones. I would switch these up. I didn't really like these. I don't think they offer that much warmth. I would change them for like a thermal legging because like, I, I'm really, really warm when I hike. Uh, if I need to take the chill off, I can just wear my rain pants. So I only really use these to sleep in, and they didn't offer very much warmth at all. You know, they're they're, they're an active layer for when you're actually like running or walking. So yeah, I, I would change those up and get a like a purely like thermal legging, like mainly just to sleep in. Wouldn't take those again. Bug net because it weighs an ounce, and there is no point in not having one of these. Always take it. Rain gear, all of my rain gear is the Z-Pax uh, Vertis rain gear, I think that's how you say it. It was a bit tricky ordering this online and guessing the sizing, but I managed to get the, like, the trousers, like the rain pants. I got them the correct size, absolutely love them. I also use them as like my wind gear just to take the wind chill off. It all works really, really well. So yeah, the trousers fit perfectly. The rain mitts, I must say, like, I hardly use them, but like, the one or two times that I got caught out in the snow, I loved them. <laughs> they worked really well. The jacket, it's again, it's the, it's like the Virtus jacket, but I got it too big. It's it's actually, it's too long for me, and it's quite annoying because then it, it rides up and I get like this big, like grouped up part like this. Um, it's quite annoying, but again, that, that's my fault for picking the wrong size. As far as like being out in the rain, it, it works really, really well. It's got these zip up, um, like go underneath your sh uh, underneath your armpits, it, so you can um, vent the air in. And yeah, I, I really like this. I can hike in it without getting too hot. Keeps me dry. Works well. And of course, for puffy, 
Everyone knows what this is. This is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Down. This was, for the first, like, 1900 miles, this was all I had as my warm layer. And yeah, it was all I needed for, like, Washington, Oregon, and NorCal. Worked really well, because I just wear it, obviously, in the evenings. I need definitely, definitely take this again. I think in the future, all I'll do is I'll, I'll keep the puffy for, like, the evenings and just match it with, like, a warmer fleece hoodie style for, for, for wearing in the daytime, like, as active wear. All right, so a few bits I didn't show you there were, like, so I used the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s. Really, really liked them. I went through, I think it was four pairs in the end. The uh, longest I'd done on them was about 700 miles. <laughs> it was horrible. So, like, 500 to 550 miles. The, the like, the midsole is sort of destroyed. But I'd use them again. Really, really good shoes. Uh, dried really fast, comfortable, really wide, like if you've got wide feet like me. Gaiters. I started off using Dirty Girl Gaiters. Uh, I carried them for the entire length of Washington and never wore them. So they went in a hiker box. Didn't see the point. Another thing I had for about the first thousand miles was these light load pack towels from z -Packs. Just like a really thin microfiber, like, cloth. I lost all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whether or not they like blew away when I was drying them. A couple of them I just accidentally left at campsites and didn't realise. I wouldn't bother. I would just use my, my buff, like I said. As well as like showers, where some of the showers don't have towels. A lot of the time there's a paper towel dispenser and you can just use that. So honestly, I wouldn't bother with like a dedicated towel. Ice gear. I did forget to mention the ice gear I carried at the start, so obviously going southbound there's a slight risk that in the, in the Cascades that there's going to be ice and there's going to be snow. So at the start I carried the Camp Corsa 50cm ice axe. Didn't use it. There was no snow. <laughs> uh, I also carried the, is it Ketula? I have to pronounce it, the Micro Spikes. Again, never used them. Both of those items went straight in a hiker box in Stahican. Um just one of them things. If I lived in the US, I could have shipped it home, but being international, it would have cost a fortune, not worth it. But they're what I would have used. Someone got lucky and found them in a hiker box. I think that covers all of my gear that I carried. Like I say, it all sort of changed along the way. Um, bits changed and I added bits on and, you know, I ended up carrying a lot more than what I should have been. This is purely because, like, living in the UK, it didn't make sense to send stuff home, the shipping cost. And because I was so close to being done, like carrying stuff in the desert, I just just put up with it. I did at one point, I bounced a few items ahead in the desert, um, like the fleece layer and a couple of extra little bits like the, the pack liner. I think definitely um, a couple of like the bear bag bits, I bounced them ahead in the end, just purely because you didn't need them. So to give you an idea of base weights, I started off with around 5.6 kilos, including all the ice gear which is about 12 and a half pounds. Got rid of some bits, um, like got rid of the ice gear. That brought me down to about five kilos, which is 11 pounds. And with all of the stuff I added, like the extra layers, the stove, um, stuff I was carrying that I just didn't need, <laughs> I probably ended up around six kilo base weight, which is like 13 pounds. So yeah, I actually ended up carrying more than what I set out with. Bear in mind, like with that number, like I added on an inflatable pad, um, like my X firm, it's actually it's the full length inflatable as well. So I added on like quite a lot of weight there. Um, like I say, like with clothes, I added on quite a lot of weight with clothes. Um, and yeah, I had like a lot of stuff I could have changed out for lighter stuff at the start, and I probably should have. If I were to hike the PCT again, I would not take the pack liner. I would just use like a trash bag, so that would instantly save you quite a lot of weight. Honestly, it rained like half a dozen times. So yeah, I would instantly do that. The food bag, I would just go straight for an op sack. I wouldn't bother with like the bear bagging, hanging kit, but that's like personal preference. Electronics would definitely get like a dedicated US plug. My plug was quite heavy and then having to have the adapter as well, quite annoying, but definitely get one that's at least two ports. Inflatable pillow, I just wouldn't bother with. Um, even like the first couple of nights when it did work, I would wake up and I'd it had gone completely off of me, it slipped away. Um, so I just didn't get along with it. Uh, I would just completely save your money and just, just use your sleeping bag bag, just put your clothes back in there. It worked absolutely fine. Water filters and water storage. Um, for the entire desert, 
I honestly, I only had two 1.5 litre smart water bottles, so three litres, and I had 700 mil up forward, so 4.2 litres. That was absolutely fine, but bear in mind I was southbound, um, and it was a really, really wet year. I know some people like having like bladders and like these inline water systems. I honestly, I, I just think it's extra weight. Just get the smart water bottles, get the soya squeeze, you can squeeze it straight through. Don't bother with all the pipes or bladders. Bladders burst and they're unreliable. The smart water bottles are easily replaceable. I would just go with that. Get the smart water bottles and the soya squeeze. Don't bother with like the soya micro like I did. And definitely don't get the soya mini uh, unless that's your thing. But yeah, that, that worked absolutely fine. And that, that's what I would take again. Smart water bottles and a soya squeeze. I already said about headlamp i would change it to well like you've seen the nightcore nu25 uh, the reason for that is so i wouldn't have to carry any spare batteries you're already carrying a power bank so the whole idea is that you make sure that everything is charging off the power bank i get that for some people they'll be like oh i want my headlamp to be dedicated off batteries just in case but honestly you're so close to a town and like you've got phone that has a flashlight on it i wouldn't worry about it i would just get a rechargeable uh, headlamp and not carry batteries so much easier for keeping all your small items in honestly don't bother with like stuff sacks and compression sacks so if it's stuff like your medical bits if you carry anything like that or just like your extra bits or like teas and coffees honestly just like ziploc bags because they're so easily changed um again like the wallet i've got that zpax wallet thinking about it now i would just put everything in a ziploc just ziploc bags don't bother with like all the little stuff sacks for everything Sleeping bag liner, like I said, I wouldn't bother. Again, that's just me personally. The only reason I kept it was because <laughs> I, I'm too tight. I already, I'd already paid for it. I was already carrying it. I didn't see the point in shipping it ahead, just on its own. Um, if I lived in the US, I would have posted it home. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother with that. And again, like the sleeping bag, get a sleeping bag that is the right size for you. Mine was too short. But uh, also a lot of people say that that bag is cold, so I'd, I would get something a little bit warmer. Um, probably like the Catabatic, either the Palisade or the the one that's 20 degrees, 22 degrees, is it like begins with an A? So like I said about a uh, fanny pack, I would definitely do that again. You'll see quite a few people out on the trail with fanny packs. Uh, I found it was super cool because I could put, like I said, like my all of my money and my power bank and all the essentials were right there in that little bag and then also as I would walk during the day I would put all my food in there like snack bars so I could just eat on the go and keep on going um, I would definitely do that again I would consider getting a fanny pack because you, you don't really want to have to stop all the time to get food out and like I say having all your essentials there if you got a hitch and a hitch went wrong or whatever you've always got all of your main bits there. Everything else is easily replaceable. Stuff like passports, credit cards, like that, that's a lot harder to source out on the trail if you were to lose it. My camera actually ran out of charge, <laughs> but so I'm just gonna finish this off quickly on my phone. The camera I used was the Canon G7X Mark II. Worked really, really well. I didn't use this tripod that you see here. I had a Ultrapod, one of the really, really small ones, and I lost it on the hitch before I even got to the trail. So I never actually had a tripod. I just balanced it on rocks and would just ask people to like hold it for me. Uh, but yeah, camera worked really, really well. I would take that again. I think it's going to survive another trail. <laughs> Hopefully this video has helped you with deciding like your gear for the trail. This is all really, really personal. Um, mine was no way, it was it the lightest, but it was also definitely not the heaviest. You could have made this a lot easier by, for instance, like the clothing, the extra clothing I got. If I'd have thought about it more sensibly, I could have just got one dedicated piece and like the right piece instead of like the fleece and the long sleeve Patagonia one. You know, so all of this is just like trial and error. A lot of people have probably already done this on shakedown hikes. I didn't. I'd only done like a couple of short overnights with the rest of the gear and I hadn't experienced like, um, like the weather of the PCT and the climate so yeah i mean like the whole idea of this was to show you what what i used what worked for me hopefully this will save you some money because you'll watch this and you'll be like oh maybe i don't need that that's what i'd really like from this is if you learn from my mistakes for the most part i would use all of this again um there's a few things i would change i hope this helps you please remember to like share subscribe and i'll see you next time